During World War II, civilians were asked to pitch in and help the troops. This meant changing jobs, taking on new tasks at home, and adjusting what they ate. Soldiers got the good grub, while everyone else had to make do with less, but instead of grumbling, people got creative and found ways to cope. Hello guys, and welcome. If you would like to hear more historical gossip, then just click on that subscribe button. Now, let's start today's video. As World War II intensified, governments faced a challenge how to divide resources between the military and civilians. To ensure enough supplies for the war effort, rationing was introduced. Here's how it worked. Everyone got a certain number of points to spend, along with money on items in short supply. For example, a pound of bacon cost seven points, on top of its price in money, about 30 cents. These points were like stamps in books given out by the government. Volunteers explained the system to sellers and buyers. Tyres were the first thing rationed, followed by cars and gas. Then, in May 1942, food like sugar and coffee was added to the list. Soon after came meat, fish, canned milk, fats and cheeses. When new items were rationed, people rushed to buy them, causing shortages. With many basics rationed, people had to get creative with cooking. During the war, the demand for meat soared, especially for soldiers on the front lines. This meant changes at home. Restaurants offered meatless menus on certain days, and ads shared meatless recipes like creamed eggs over pancakes and walnut cheese patties. Home cooks got creative too, finding new ways to stretch ingredients. Take meatloaf, for example. Instead of beef, they used veggies like peas, mashed potatoes and tomato soup. It wasn't the same, but it made a hearty meal and helped use up leftovers in wartime. During rationing, making meals last meant getting creative with leftovers. One popular dish, bubble and squeak, relied on mashed potatoes as a base. Potatoes were abundant and took on different flavours well. So bubble and squeak became a go-to, mixing mashed potatoes with whatever meat and veggies were on hand to create a tasty potato pancake-like meal. When flour was hard to find in occupied Poland, folks got creative. They used beans instead, boiling and mincing them to make cakes. Sure, beans taste different, but adding lots of sugar made them pretty tasty. During the conflict, there were lots of veggies around because they couldn't be sent to soldiers overseas. Fresh fruits and veggies would spoil during shipping, so people were encouraged to eat more of them at home. The government even asked civilians to start their own victory gardens to free up factory space for making war stuff. Onions were a hit because they were easy to grow and tough. People started stuffing them with all sorts of things, like grape nuts, a cereal that's not too exciting on its own, but worked well in recipe. It gave the stuffed onions a meaty texture, and with the right seasoning, they could still make a tasty snack today. Coffee is a staple for countless people, but during World War II, it was in short supply. Most coffee beans were sent to soldiers, leaving little for civilians. People were limited to just one pound every five to six weeks, which meant less than a cup a day. Imagine the struggle. In this period, families had limited choices for meat often ending up with unusual cuts like animal tongue. Despite its intimidating appearance, beef tongue became a common ingredient in meals, adding a new twist to old favourite. Instead of serving it as a whole tongue, cooks got creative making casseroles with braised beef tongue. One simple recipe involved simmering the tongue with carrots, onions, celery and tomato sauce for hours until tender. This adaptation shows how families made do with what they had, turning unconventional ingredients into tasty dishes during difficult times. Spit soup, despite its unappetizing name, was actually a tasty creation born out of necessity in occupied Poland during World War II. With access to many traditional ingredients cut off, Poles had to get creative with what they had. They turned surplus barley into a hearty soup, but since they had to spit out the husks while eating it, the name stuck. You might think sawdust here means some kind of food, but it's not. It's just plain old sawdust. In England and Germany during World War II, they didn't have a lot of wheat, so they mixed what they had with sawdust. 
Some recipes even called it tree flour. One German recipe for black bread had rye grains, sliced beets, sawdust and minced leaves and straw. Sounds pretty strange, right? But when you're in a war, you eat what you can to survive. So which dish would you pick? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you.